Hey, how's it going guys? Mr. Boss for the win here, and in today's Red Dead Redemption 2 video, we are going to be solving the secret of the Greys and the Braithwaites. These are like the two plantation families that you run into in Chapter 3, and there's a lot of mystery surrounding them. Are their families secretly in love, even though they hate each other? Do they have hidden gold somewhere that we can actually find? That's what we're going to be diving into in this video today. So let's start at the Braithwaite Manor. So if you go here during or before chapter three, you'll notice that this is a guarded, beautiful plantation mansion. It's very similar to what mansions like this uh, back in the plantation days were like. It's massive, it has those giant columns, it's just really, really beautiful. However, there's a lot of secrets that we can actually uncover once we get past chapter three. So I'm not going to spoil what happens, but if you haven't reached that point in chapter three, this is something you might want to come back to because if you return to the mansion after chapter three, you'll notice that it looks a little bit different. In particular, it has been burned to the ground, as you guys know. Now, upon returning to this uh, home after it's been burned, we can actually find a couple of interesting things. The first is the burnt corpse of Catherine Braithwaite. As you guys might have known, she went into the house as it was erupting in flames for whatever reason. I don't know if she just wanted to go down with her house, if she was looking for a particular possession. We're really not too sure. Now we can actually loot the body of Catherine Braithwaite and what's interesting is we get a very special item. We actually get Catherine's brooch. And this is something that actually can be sold to the fence if you want, or it's something you can hold on to as well. It really just depends on if you want the extra money or not. But that is interesting that that's the only special item that she has on her. Now, if you immediately hook a left underneath the floorboard, you'll actually find a lockbox. And in that lockbox, you will find one golden bar. Is this the gold that Dutch so feverishly thought these two families were fighting over? Or is this just one of many lockboxes hidden with gold? Now, as you guys know, that gold bar is actually worth $500. So it is a good chunk of money if you bring that to the fence. You can actually sell it for that amount and uh, you can get a pretty good amount of money. But there is gold hidden there. And there's also a burnt up photograph that we simply cannot see as well. It has been completely scorched. So I'm not sure what was on that photograph, but uh, that right there is kind of interesting. Now that's actually not the only secret the Braithwaites have actually been keeping. There's this locked outhouse with a crescent moon window with chains wrapped around it. And on the inside is this crazy lady. And Arthur will actually write in his journal that he has found a crazy young woman, real strange looking locked in kind of an outhouse hidden on Braithwaite Manor. World ain't kind of place uh, to folk like her. So, and you can see that the entire time this lady is counting, but can't seem to count. So I don't know if she's possessed. I don't know if there's something wrong with her. Like uh, if she has some sort of disease, we, we really don't know. We don't get a ton of information, but clearly the Braithwaites wanted nothing to do with her as they actually locked her in the outhouse. Now, what's crazy is if you come back during the epilogue as John, she'll actually be a skeleton. So the Braithwaites, not only did they lock her in here, they didn't care for her either. They literally let her die. They didn't give her water or anything like that. So again, she'll actually turn into a skeleton if you come back later in the campaign. So lots of creepiness going on with the Braithwaites right there, but we did discover some gold. Now, what about the Greys? Is there secrets regarding the Greys? The answer to that is yes. So if you actually go to the back porch of the Greys Manor, you can actually find this mysterious letter. The letter is to Mr. Gray from Malcolm Moffat, April 3rd, 1895, which was about four years ago, Edinburgh University from the Senior Professor in History. It says, Dear Mr. Gray, thank you for your long and well-researched letter regarding your ancestor. Forgive me, I was unclear if he was your great-grandfather or great-great-grandfather from your missive, and his ostracizing and immigration from Scotland to the colonies in the aftermath of the uprising of 1745. 
I hate to be the bearer of apparent bad tidings, particularly when such communication with such a passionate Scot in exile as you describe yourself, but I am afraid our records are rather precise. I have made an extensive study of the spy networks of the Duke of Cumberland, as you may be aware. The Duke was an excellent record keeper, and it seems that the relative whom you speak, Ross Gray, was unquestionably a well-paid informer. He was paid in both cattle and cash and also rewarded in significant land holdings confiscated from his neighbor. That would explain why he did not leave Scotland until 1755, fully 10 years after the revolt. This was, of course, a year when a few Jacobite supporters began reprisals against known informers in the Highlands. I am sorry if this is not the news that you were looking for. The Jacobite era was a very complicated time in Scottish history, and certainly my antecedents are divided into rebels and loyalists. Being the progeny of a family of loyalists is certainly nothing to be ashamed by. At least I hope not. If you're ever in Edinburgh, I do hope I can show you around the university. Your sincerely, Malcolm Moffat. So maybe you guys can help me out with this because I am certainly a little bit confused by this entire message, but apparently it's like the Greys aren't as pure of a family as they thought they were and that their bloodline might be made up of like rebels or something along the lines. I'm really not too sure. It was a little bit confusing. Arthur writes in his journal, he says, well, 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 guess the Grey family ain't quite the proud, noble Southern patriots they pretended to be. So maybe like they're Scottish or something along those lines. I'm really not too sure. It was a little bit confusing. Now, we can actually find out more about the Greys and their secret family past if we travel to this exact island right here. So it is on the very east side of the map. Uh, if, again, if you go to this exact point, you'll find a lockbox that someone looks to have been burying or they were in the process of digging up. And this letter is very interesting. It is letter to Douglas Gray from Lucille Braithwaite. This is June 12th, 1806, a long time ago. My dearest Douglas, the mere act of writing your name weakens me with longing. My exile in Connecticut has endured barely three weeks, but it already feels like a lifetime since I last saw your wonderful smile. Why should the family in which I was born and a surname that was imposed on me dictate whom I can and cannot love? Like you always say, however, there are so many less fortunate than ourselves and subject to far worse partality and narrow-mindedness. Please take all that gold to the group I told you about. It should provide them with enough funding for another two years of operation so they can keep pressure on Congress to abolish the importation of slaves into this country once and for all. Our two families are so blinded by avarice and bitterness that either they will not realize it is missing or they will assume the other has stolen it from them. Then come for me, my love, as we planned, and we will flee somewhere far away, down to South America or across Europe, where we can simply live our lives as Douglas and Lucille, not as Master Gray and Miss Braithwaite. Yours always, Lucille. Wow. So we get a lot of interesting details right there. So the Penelope and Bo storyline that we're actually going to touch on in a little bit seems to be a common theme, like members from both of these families ending up loving each other. And they also mention the gold. That is sort of the story that plays out is these people think they've stolen from each other when in reality, it looks like people that were just in love just ran off with it. So the story just gets more and more confusing. You know, where could the gold potentially be? I don't know if anyone is ever going to find it. I don't think the gold that was in that lockbox of the Braithwaite Manor is it. I definitely think it is potentially somewhere else. Now, let's talk about that secret mission in Chapter 6. If you complete one mission in Chapter 6, you'll actually get a letter from Penelope, who will actually ask for your help in escaping the state of Lemoyne. She wants to get away with Bo once and for all. Dear Sir, you were once very kind to Bo and myself, and it pains me to ask you to show us further kindness. But I have nowhere else to turn and nobody else upon whom I can impose. I will, of course, pay you handsomely for your troubles. My family have turned quite mad and are threatening to send me away to stop my work, which they say is disgracing them. As if their history of absolute moral depravity, utter debauchery, and perpetual drunkenness did not disgrace them enough. I must escape, yet I am kept prisoner here. Can you help? Most days, I am to be found at the cabins on the plantation. The main house and all it stood for are thankfully no more. Yours faithfully, Penelope Braithwaite. So once you've read that letter, it is your objective to go find Penelope. She's going to be located on the Braithwaite Manor, and another cutscene will ultimately trigger. Oh, oh 
Oh, you came. You came. You finally came. I came. Oh, thank you. Thank you, you lovely, lovely man. Uh, calm down, miss. Oh, come on. Let's go. We ain't got a minute to lose. They killed her. They killed Miss Calhoun. All she wanted was a better lot for women, and they killed her, those pigs. Who killed her? I don't know. My cousins, probably, or, or bows. Well, you met them. They are animals. Not even animals. Monsters. Monsters! If God had lost all his powers of imagination. Can you... Can you please take me to the train station? Bo will be waiting. Bo? Why couldn't he come and rescue you? Well, if they saw me and him together, they'd lynch him and send me off to a nunnery. Or maybe they'd lynch us both, I ain't quite sure. They do so love hanging folk. Where are you heading? Up to Boston. Good. Yeah, I like you up there. Come on. Let's go. Of course. Though as usual with these couples, nothing ever comes easy. Uh, there's people that want to stop her and Bo from boarding the train, but you just ultimately beat them up, and then you board the train, and apparently they want to escape to Boston. The future. All right, all done. That is quite a family you've got there, son. I know. Charming to the last. Then again, my uncle used to keep his own half-brother as a slave. So, what do you expect? Good manners? My uncle used to say things were better the way they were when he could rape and kill with impunity and he didn't have to work a day in his life. Both our families. There's good people in this county, but our families bully them and drove most of them off. Whites as well as blacks, all over this silly feud. Yeah, well... How delightful. Oh, my lord. What? Oh, I think it's my second cousin. What is with all these goddamn cousins? I think they found out about the jewels. All right, keep your heads down. I'll deal with this. Now, of course, as I mentioned, nothing ever comes easy here. More of her cousins actually chase them on the train. It is up to Arthur to actually take care of them. And then it also becomes his job to drive the train as well, which is one of the more interesting things you get to do. You literally get to drive a train. And after a little bit, that will trigger another cutscene where you say your final goodbyes to the couple. Why have we stopped? It's best you go on alone from here. Mr. Arthur, I didn't know you could drive a train. Neither did I. But if I'm honest, it was kind of fun. <laughs> and I didn't kill any of us. Well, I killed some of your relatives, but they would have killed all of us. You are a gentleman, sir. Oh, no, I ain't. Yes, you are. Here, I ain't got much money, but these sapphires are worth a lot of money. Old... Family heirloom. That Braithwaite treasure. Thank you. Now, let's get you off to Boston before any more of your relatives show up. That might be wise. Hey, you there? Mm hmm This couple is heading up north to the Boston line. They got money, they'll pay you on arrival. That work for you? Yeah, sounds fine. Get on in. Hey, um... You carry protection on a journey like this? <laughs> I wouldn't be much of a stage driver if I didn't. Goes everywhere I do. Hey! <gasps> Miss Braithwaite is going to hold on to this until arrival. Hmm? On account of the treasure on your person. I don't know how to thank you. Uh -huh. You're a fine man, sir. Just get out of here. I'll leave. Yeah! So anyways, that right there completes our journey with the Greys and the Braithwaites, and that is all of their secrets revealed, as well as all the secret missions that you can do as well. That mission that you just witnessed, it isn't something that you have to do. Now, you saw that Penelope actually gave us her bracelet right there. If we go to the fence, we can actually sell that, and it can be sold for $75. So again, if that's something you're interested in selling, you can. $75 is an okay amount of money, not a ton. I think I'm gonna hold on to it just because, you know, it's sort of a nice reminder of the long journey we've been on. But anyways, that's all the information that I've got for you guys in this video today. Hopefully you did enjoy. Let me know your thoughts, opinions, and more in the comments down below on this entire story and saga. If you did go on to enjoy this video though, a like rating would of course be awesome. And subscribe to my YouTube channel if you are new. 
or you like daily Red Dead Redemption 2 videos like this. With all the way, guys, like I said, thanks so much for watching. Take care, and I'll see you guys in the next video.